Good day, dear colleagues. This is Dr. Jihad, and our today's lecture is a continuation to the series uh, that we have started about one year ago, what surgeons should know. And today we are going to talk about some principles of colectomy. Uh, in this lecture, we are going to talk about colectomy related to malignant condition for benign conditions such as trauma. We, uh, we will have a separate uh, lecture. Uh, if we are talking about malignancy treated with colectomy, so we mean colon cancer stage 1, 2, 3, and even some resectable stage 4 colon cancer. Yes, surgery here is the cornerstone for the treatment, not, all, not only the treatment, but also for selecting a patient for uh, adjuvant therapy or not after sending the surgical specimen to the histopathological to the, to the histopathology so we can classify the patient depending on the need for chemotherapy or not so this is another benefit of the surgery um, you would notice that this lecture is not heavy in the information or not information rich lecture this is because many principles we already talked about when we talked about anastomosis when we talked about uh, anatomy of the colon so we in this lecture we will highlight the basic uh, skills that we should follow during colectomy uh, yes we when when we want to remove a segment of a deceased colon so it's important to have a negative margin not only negative margin but also to remove the mesentery associated with that segment with the highest risk of lymphatic separate so the lymphatic uh, status also is an important issue and we will discuss it during this lecture we will see that the resection of the segment of the deceased colon is dependent on the location and the vascular supply of this segment as we will see one of the first important step uh, before proceeding to colectomy is the preoperative tumor localization and as we know that most of the patient comes to us with the pathology with the sorry colonoscopy report uh, in which they mention the uh, location of the tumor distant from the anal verge and plus minus the histopathological report of the biopsy which was taken we should be alert that the colonoscopic localization is not always correct and as you see in front of you about 20 percent of the colonoscopic uh, localization is not correct it's a mislocation and even those surgeon who depends on colonoscopic localization will alter the surgical procedure in about 10 percent okay uh, in this source they highlight on the importance of the distance or the centimeter of them from the anal verge they recommend that not to depend on this uh, 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 distance alone for many reasons we have flexible instruments we have flexible parts of the colon and so we shouldn't alone depends on the location based on centimeter from the anal verge especially if we are talking about a tumor in the left colon which is near the sigmoid rectosigmoid in which the location for the tumor for for the same tumor the same size for the same stage in the colon or rectum will have different treatment protocol so please do not depend alone on the colonoscopic localization and they also 
say that it's hard, more hard, if there is no cecal or rectal tumor because in the cecum and rectum we have a colonoscopic landmark that make us sure that this is the rectum, this is the cecum. But if we are talking about descending a tumor, transverse tumor ascending, it may be hard to differentiate between these parts. This is a colonoscopic report done preoperatively for one of my patients and you see here that the anal, anal and rectum is normal while the sigmoid we have a polyp and in the descending colon we have ugly looking circumferential lesion about 35 centimeter from the anal vert. Should we depend, should we talk, take this patient and pick it to the operate to the theater? The answer is no. So what other modality we have? Some surgeon repeat the flexible sigmoidoscopy specially especially if the tumor in the left side. Why? Because left side is near the rectum. We are talking about near the rectum, near the sigmoid. So the, the, the location of the tumor can alter, can change the treatment plan. Yes, we know that we have a principle called preoperative CT. Preoperative CT, it's not the gold standard. We use it for staging, it's a nice modality for staging, but again, it's uh, not the gold standard for uh, determining where is the tumor is, especially if it is too small. CT is helpful, but not the gold standard. And this is a CT for one of my patients, and you can see in the abdomen and CT scan, we have a highly what significant circumferential rectal thickening. This is based on the CT with mesorectal fat stranding with the conclusion highly suspicious of rectal wall thickening. Okay, we said that we have colonoscopy, we have CT, but they never reach uh, the 100 accuracy. What other modality we have? Okay, tattooing actually, tattooing will help us in the intraoperative uh, tumor localization, especially, especially if we are going to do minimally invasive colectomy. Minimally invasive, I mean laparoscopic or robotic in which we have no chance to feel the bubble. We have no chance to feel the tumor. So tattooing is important. They talk about tattooing in details. They use the India ink and actually how to inject it. Actually, it's injected in the submucosal layer. First of all, they inject saline to cause a space to create a space for the India ink. And then they inject the India ink. Again, this is a matter of intraoperative. This is how intraoperative localization of hepatic flexure tumor using the India ink. Of course, there are some difficulties associated with the India ink. Of these difficulties is the amount is not adequate, obesity, adhesion. Uh, if the uh, injected ink is in the mesenteric quadrant, so it's difficult to localize. Also, they discuss where to inject actually we should actually pay attention to the colonoscopic report it may be injected proximal distal it's not advised to inject near the tu in the tumor uh, the preferred and the best is to inject it in the distal margin of the tumor this is because the surgeon the, the surgeon's concern is the distal margin of the resection Okay. Okay. What other method we have in localization? Actually, even with all of these, we have we didn't reach the one hundred percent exact localization or the uh, one hundred percent sensitivity and the specificity of localization. We should be ready for altering the plan of. Uh, planned resection, but we have another method is the intraoperative colonoscopy is another method in which we use the carbon dioxide 
and also we have the clip we during colonoscopy the, the colonoscopist can put a clip and you can see even the clip this is here this is a radiograph uh, x-ray for uh, two patients and the two patients have a tumor 6 t 60 centimeter from the anal verge you can see that the clip here is in the pelvis and the clip here is high in the abdomen so the variation in the location of the clip even both are 60 centimeter from the anal verge what's recommended they recommend to put a clip take x-ray and go for ct at the same time uh, because the the clip can help uh, us when reading the ct report uh, to see where the tumor is so this modality that we have in the preoperative localization for the tumor we have no one single uh, uh, modality with 100 percent accuracy in determining the exact location okay okay one of the basic uh, uh, principles is the extent of resection this means if i have a tumor the cut edge where it should be how many centimeter proximal and distal to achieve good oncological result to achieve negative margin to achieve low anastomosis recurrence so it's recommended in the colon to get five centimeter proximal and five centimeter distal to the legion this is one plus i need to to remove the feeding vessel uh, to that uh, tumor and removing of the feeding vessel should be high from its origin not near the tumor itself we call it high ligation we have a concept low ligation but we will explain it in the next few seconds when we proceed for high ligation it actually maximize the lymphadenectomy as we know it follows the arterial supply just an example just to show you what do we mean by high ligation and low ligation this is suppose this is a, a sigmoid cancer the sigmoid is supplied by sigmoidal arch sigmoidal arches sigmoidal arteries that comes from the inferior mesenteric artery this is the inferior mesenteric artery we have a principle called high ligation we should remove the uh, feeding vessel from its origin means that we should remove the uh, 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 inferior mesenteric artery from its origin another concept is the low ligation low ligation is just removing removing the feeding vessel to that part not the uh not proximal but low as in this picture you see they remove just the sigmoidal uh, arches so what in uh, where to go for high ligation or for low ligation in colon cancer high ligation it is controversial except in the sigmoid it is controversial to proceed for high ligation or low ligation yes High ligation is associated with more lymphatic node harvesting, but it is not proven that high ligation have functional or oncological differences when we compare it to low ligation. This is correct in sigmoid. In the other part of the colon, we proceed for high ligation, as we will see in the next few minutes. Some some just say the debate about the sigmoid for to proceed for high ligation or low ligation is because of the ter our terminology what do we mean by inferior mesenteric artery some says the inferior mesenteric artery is only the segment before giving the left colic and the sigmoidal and some says no the inferior mesenteric artery is the whole artery until it comes over the iliac and continues as a superior hemorrhoidal artery 
I don't want to disturb you. What we need from this topics is five centimeter proximal, five centimeter distal, high ligation of the vessel, and we move to no touch technique. No touch. Okay. No touch technique. Uh, when it's discovered, uh, theoretically it was promising. The idea stands behind it is that not no manipulation of the tumor so preventing the malignant cell to spread through the circulation and if you want to apply to the no touch technique before mobilization of the tumor you have to ligate the vascular pedicle as i said Initially, it was promising, but with the development of science of the study, there was no difference in disease-free survival, overall survival, or recurrence-free survival. So, theoretically, it was promising, but practically no difference between conventional surgery and no-touch technique for uh, colectomy. Lymphadenectomy. Okay, another important principle is the lymphadenectomy, and as you see here, at least we need 12 lymph nodes to be harvested and examined, plus removing the vessel from its origin. Okay, actually, there is a ratio involved lymph node. Uh, and uh, harvested, totally harvested lymph node, and it's actually associated with the patient's outcome, and it's a marker of the adequacy of the resection. Okay, this is a report for one of my patients. You can see here that number of lymph node with a tumor 3, number of lymph node examinated 19 the ratio is 3 over 19 so we can proper stage the patient later okay mesocolic exogen okay complete mesocolic exogen or cme and to understand what we mean this is the tumor this is at least five centimeter distal and at least five centimeter proximal margin. We said that we should do uh, remove the vascular supply in a high fashion, proximal fashion. Do we need to remove this tissue, the mesocolic tissue? And the answer, the, the, the question appear when we start to perform mesorectal exogen. The mesorectal exogen is proven to improve the survival in patients with rectal cancer. In colonic cancer, it's less developed as an entity, but yes, it is advisable. And some studies, yes, it's not, uh, let's say, uh, it's not a, a randomized control study, but they show that the recurrence rate is decreased when we perform complete mesocolic oxygen when we compare it to just removing the uh, colon without the mesocolon. Plus, another benefit that it's associated with uh, more lymph node harvesting. The survival rate is increased when we compare it to the conventional surgery. This is, again, the complete mesocolic exogen. This is the plane where we should remove the uh, mesocolon and posteriorly will be the retroperitoneal structure. One of the fear that face us is uh, the SMV. The SMV can be tiered while performing the uh, complete mesocolic exogen. So the SMV is responsible for the uh, outflow of the small intestine and may result in a 
venous mesenteric ischemia in about 2% of the patient. Okay, what else I can add? We said that it improved the lymph node harvesting, especially these uh, lymph node uh, that is central and apical, and we can pick the skipped legion. Uh, actually, the indicator, the mouse is not working well. <coughs> we can pick the skipped legion with complete mesocolic exogen. No functional outcome. The conclusion, yes, meso, complete mesocolic exogen is preferred, but it's not, it's less studied, developed, uh, theoretically when we compare it to complete uh, to uh, sorry to total mesorectal exogen okay okay uh, if we have organ invasion so the answer intraoperatively is in block resection with reconstruction if it is uh, feasible if it's available uh, 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 actually invasion can be to any part to the abdominal uh, wall very common bladder the denim omentum ovaries peritoneum retroperitoneum small bowel stomach ureters uh, uterus and block resection with negative uh, circumferential margins uh, actually the question here is not do we need new adjuvant chemotherapy or new adjuvant chemo radiotherapy? This is, we are intraoperative, we have adhesion. Uh, by the way, the adhesion between malignant structure and other structure is about 40% to be malignant adhesion, not just simple adhesion. As we said, in block resection, for example, if we are talking about the abdominal wall, so in block resection and reconstruction if we are talking about uh, ureters and iliac resection and reconstruction if it's feasible distal pancreas tail of the pancreas and spleen splenectomy uh, denim and pancreas pancreatic adenectomy in block pancreatic adenectomy again we are not going to discuss does this patient need new adjuvant chemotherapy or radiotherapy actually for locally advanced tumor as a simple information locally advanced tumor we need new adjuvant chemotherapy if we move down in the sigmoid and rectum new adjuvant chemo radiotherapy actually in the colon we do not we do not want to expose the small bowel to the radiation so chemo new adjuvant chemotherapy is enough while if we have a sigmoid tumor that involve, involve pelvic organ we can proceed to chemo radiotherapy but this is different uh, entity we will discuss it in a different uh, topic a uh, different lecture actually this is just a picture shows you the terminology of the colectomies for example let's see a to p this is right hemicolectomy we will see in the next few minutes what does right hemicolectomy versus extended right hemicolectomy from a to c and we have a transverse colectomy p to c we have left hemicolectomy c to e we have sigmoid d to e d to e sigmoid actually we will discuss all these in brief in the next few minutes what i can add anterior resection d to f d to f this is anterior resection actually sigmoid cancer is ca the, the the treatment is anterior resection especially in the uh, middle and distal sigmoid we treat it with anterior resection it's not uh, we are not going now to talk what's the difference between low and ultra low and simple anterior resection but what else we can add proctectomy total colectomy this is the picture if you want to see the things okay let's take more specifically about tumor depending on the location okay for tumor in the cecum and ascending colon the procedure of choice is right hemicolectomy with ileo 
colic anastomosis. As you see in this picture, we actually remove the uh, 10 centimeter of the ileum proximal to the ileocecal valve, 10 centimeter. We remove the cecum, appendix, ascending colon, and the proximal part of the transverse colon. After removing that, we remove the feeding vessel from its origin. These vessels are the iliocolic, as you see here, the iliocolic, this is the most constant artery. We also remove tie, ligate, the right colic, but it may be absent, and the right branch of the middle colic, this one, the right branch of middle colic, it's here, right branch of middle colic. Okay, we have actually many approach. We can start from medial to lateral, or lateral to medial as in this picture as you see from lateral to medial <coughs> okay actually we can perform it laparoscopically open or robotic and robotic surgery um, the anastomosis is performed depends on the surgeon preference end to end side side to side stapler hand c1 intracorporeal extra inside the abdomen outside extracorporeal so it's surgeon preference okay this is the position uh, we actually this is the laparoscopic right hemicolectomy you can see that the surgeon is on the right side of the left side on the left side of the patient and here is the robotic surgery you can see the main surgeon is far from the patient one of the actually main difficulties or the difficulties not the main one of the difficulties that i face uh, when i proceed with colectomies with other senior colleague is to know his preference regarding the positioning regarding the port insertion so it may depend on the senior colleague where he want to stand where uh, how where to insert the uh, ports so it may be it, it depends on the main surgeon actually this is what i want to say we said we have medial to lateral approach here you can see the start from medial approach they start from the mesentery they start from here from the, from the mesentery going uh, going to the lateral approach and um, of course one of the most important step is to check either inspection or you feel the liver for any metastatic disease and also to see if there is any adhesion to the didenum and the pancreas this adhesion can be malignant okay this is the lateral approach you can see they start from down from the cecum this is this is called the line of tilt they free it and they go medial actually some surgeon prefer the medial to lateral because if we start lateral the large bowel will drop to, uh, to the operating field and will make it hard to deal with the mesentery a question appeared do, do we need to close i don't know if i have a picture here uh -huh. do do i need to close the uh, mesentery actually in right hemicolectomy the mesenteric defect is large and obstruction on herniation symptomatic hernia is not uh, a big problem so it's not mandatory to close the mesentery you can see here after resection and anastomosis we have an opened mesentery here they close it um, one of the important step also to free the hepatic flexure this is the hepatico hepatocolic ligament okay they freed it and we will discuss it when we will talk about the transverse colon tumor opening the lesser sac also helps me in identifying the vessel that supply the uh, transverse colon actually this is the lesser sac the lesser sac actually comes between the transverse colon and the stomach you open it after you remove the peritoneum you open it and you will face in front of you the posterior aspect of the transverse colon the spleen and the posterior side or wall of the stomach uh, 
this is important especially it's not mandatory in writing mucolectomy but it's important in uh, trans uh, in a tumor in the transverse colon what else we want to add um, okay we said we have two approach this is medial to lateral approach laparoscopic surgery let's move to tumor in the where in the hepatic flexure and the treatment for hepatic flexure colon cancer is the same right hemicolectomy yes sometime i may need extended right hemicolectomy especially if it is deviated a little bit toward the distal part so what is the difference between right the classic right hemicolectomy and extended right you can see in this picture that in extended right hemicolectomy the middle colic artery is removed from its origin the right branch and the left branch whereas in the right the classic right hemicolectomy only the right branch is removed you can see only the right branch in the extended right we remove the right and left a branch of middle colic artery we have to ensure a good vascular supply to the splenic flexure through the inferior mesenteric artery by a retrograde fashion so we have to check how to check actually we already discussed this in the anastomosis lecture either with pulsatile bleeding endocyanine green test etc we have but we have to check the retrograde a blood supply to the splenic flexure because it may depend only on the middle colic artery if there is absent in the marginal arteries here so this is the main difference between extended and classic right hemi extended right hemi we remove the main pedicle of the middle colic artery with its two branches right and left one of the procedure here i want to add is we have to open the lister sac and visualize in uh, hepatic in uh, hepatic flexure tumor we have to open the lister sac to visualize and mobilize the colon uh, yes we i may need to mobilize the splenic flexure to do an anastomosis in a tension free manner uh, it's not mandatory, but some surgeon will prefer mitrotili to mobilize the splenic flexure. Again, here, splenectomy is not mandatory and it's not associated with improved oncological or functional outcome. What I can add regarding the hepatic flexure? Okay, okay, okay. Uh, finally, an ileocolic anastomosis is created, as we said, can be upon surgeon preference, intracarporeal, extracarporeal, hand C1 stapled, combined, um, side to side, end to end, antiperistaltic or peristaltic, as isoperistaltic. It depends on the surgeon. Isoperistaltic, by the way, if you remember from the anastomosis lecture, will be more. Uh, logical logic in extended right because it gives us additional distance the isoperistaltic yes okay we said removal of the spleen is not necessary we move to the transverse colon cancer okay in tumor in the transverse colon the decision is a challenging little bit um, this is because the transverse colon received blood supply from the left colon left colic middle colic and right colic artery this is one but the ideal procedure for any tumor in the transverse and even in other part of the colon is that procedure that remove the regional lymph node which is based on arterial blood supply and corresponding mesentery the resected part shouldn't be affected by the richness of the uh, bowel the uh, does the two end reach or not i should follow the principles of lymphatic drainage the removal of adequate uh, lymph nodes and the removal of the tumor with negative margin to be more clear if i have a transverse colon and i have a 
that the tumor is in the proximal transverse so the decision is to proceed for extended right hemicolectomy as you see here boom 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 okay proximal transverse colon cancer treated with extended right hemicolectomy as we discussed in the hepatic flexure tumor if the tumor is more distal i have many choices either to proceed with extended right hemicolectomy or extended left hemicolectomy as in this picture or segmental transverse colectomy as in this picture i have three procedures many surgeon many surgeon prefer the extended right even for distal distal uh, uh, transverse colon tumor they prefer extended right because bringing the ileum to the colon is less challenging than bringing the colon to the colon such as an uh, extended left hemicolectomy uh, this is one uh, second if you see this is the extended left hemicolectomy I need to remove the left colic artery the middle colic artery from its origin and bringing an ileo sorry a colocolic anastomosis the colocolic anastomosis is not actually uh, 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 let's say assuring like the iliocolic uh, the colocolic anastomosis is associated with higher leak rate not only that also the mobilization of the ascending and descending segment is difficult when we compare it to iliocolic anastomosis in case of extended right hemicolectomy also um, if we talk about segmental resection many surgeons does, do not prefer this procedure because the adequacy of lymph node harvesting is questionable in this procedure and they only prefer it in cases of palliative cases uh, in those patients who doesn't tolerate extended resection so in summary for a transverse colon we have if it is in the proximal transverse extended right in the distal transverse mid or distal transverse I have either extended right extended left and in a lesser degree, lesser preference, the segmental uh, transverse resection. As you see here, segmental resection. Okay. Tumor in the splenic flexure, I have many choices. If the tumor is deviated a little bit toward the transverse colon, so I proceed to, or what we call it, proximal splenic flexure tumor, I proceed to extended left hemicolectomy this is the extended left hemicolectomy in which i remove the left colic and the middle colic artery okay what other option i have we said legion in the proximal splenic flexure if the legion in the splenic flexure or proximal descending i can proceed as you see in this picture to what we call it the segmental left hemicolectomy segmental left hemicolectomy what uh, uh, is the difference between segmental left hemicolectomy and formal left hemicolectomy in which here i preserve the sigmoid dull artery and superior hemorrhoidal artery i remove not the inferior mesenteric artery but the left colic branch and the left branch of middle colic artery this is called segmental left hemicolectomy used for splenic flexure tumor and for proximal descending tumor if i'm talking about this actually an anastomosis will be created between the transverse and the sigmoid as you see here okay if I have a region more distal in the descending colon, in the mid, for example, or near the sigmoid, so I proceed to formal left hemicolectomy. As you see in this picture, formal left hemicolectomy, I remove the inferior mesenteric artery from its origin. And so, no sigmoid will be. I will remove the sigmoidal uh, arches. And so, and colo 
rectal anastomosis will be performed. So this is formal left hemicolectomy for mid and distal trans uh, distal descending. We remove the inferior mesenteric artery from its origin and the left branch of the middle colic. Okay. The vein, the inferior mesenteric vein, is removed near the ligament, as you see here, near the ligament of traits or the suspensory ligament of the duodenum. It's over here near the inferior edge of the pancreas. You have to be aware of the retroperitoneal lift structure. You can see this is the actually mesenteric plane. This is a medial to lateral plane <coughs> or technique. <coughs> Actually, you can see here the ureter. You have to identify it to and to avoid to injure it. And we have the gonadal vessel. These are near the descending and sigmoid uh, uh, posteriorly. Okay. Uh, okay. What else we can actually in iliorectal anastomosis in formal left hemicolectomy? It's performed endoscopically. Uh, and an air test, air leak test should be performed. Sometime bringing the transverse ileum, actually, when we remove all this part, to bring the, e the transverse ileum or proximal transverse to the rectum is difficult, so we do retroilial anastomosis. It's actually a window between the iliocolic and the uh, right colic artery, a window and the mesentery is opened and we bring retroerially the transverse colon to reach the rectum. I don't know if I have any information to add about the transverse. So we said segmental, we said extended lift in proximal splenic or segmental lift in splenic and proximal descending and formal left in mid descending and distal descending okay what else i can add okay let's move to sigmoid cancer okay for a tumor in the sigmoid colon again this depends on which part of the sigmoid does the lesion okay if it is in the proximal sigmoid in the proximal sigmoid so we can proceed to formal left hemicolectomy but if it is in the distal or mid sigmoid, we can proceed to anterior resection. We start to talk about the anterior resection or what we call it the sigmoid colectomy. Actually, it's removing only the inferior mesenteric artery after giving the left colic artery. So, this is the sigmoid colectomy for mid and distal sigmoid lesion. Again, here the Anastomosis is done endoscopically, as you see here, and circular stapler inserted through the anus and rectum, and the anvil is fixed to the proximal part of the bowel, and end-to-end -end stapler anastomosis is done, and it's routinely to perform the air leak test, air test for, this is actually we uh, put water, close the proximal part after creating the anastomosis, and we give gas to ensure no leak. What else I can add, please, when you deal with the sigmoid and descending, be careful of the retroperitoneal structure, such as the, uh, uh, as you see here, the ureter, And the gonadal vessel, again, it's seen here. Well, you have to be careful. You have to identify the ureter. It's just a nice information. I don't think this is its place, but even so, they said that the blood supply to the uh, ureter is medial to lateral. As you see in this picture, it's medial to lateral in the abdomen. And if you go down to the pelvis, it's lateral to medial. So uh, dissection or release of the ureter is preferred from lateral to medial in the abdomen and from medial to lateral up 
far from the vascular supply in the pelvis this is uh, just a question I have been asked uh, two days ago from one of my colleagues you can see here is where the ureter cross over the iliac artery here is the most likely site for injury near the iliac artery so this you have to be careful when performing so let's summarize it again sigmoid we have proximal sigmoid formal left hemicolectomy pest bitter for lymphatic uh, harvesting if we are talking about mid and distal sigmoid we go to anterior resection or what we call it sigmoid colectomy okay some special circumstances okay and special circumstances we already discussed this issue in the lecture of intestinal obstruction and we discussed the principles of colectomies in cases of intestinal obstruction a nice lecture I, I advise you to watch it one of the variant is to proceed for total abdominal colectomy uh, this is the stent in the luminal stent which can be a bridge for formal resection uh, the lunch syndrome hereditary non polyposis colon cancer the treatment is total abdominal colectomy or subtotal colectomy uh, the reason is that we have metacranus colon cancer we will discuss about this in detail in another lecture thank you bye bye